When I think of a Lexus drop top, the nightmarish SC430 quickly comes to mind. While that car was comfortable, refined, luxurious, it was a great boulevard cruiser, it was simply frumpy looking from every angle. Which brings me to the newest addition for, to the Lexus family for 2021. This is the all new LC500 convertible, and as you can see, she definitely isn't frumpy looking anymore. In fact, it's based off of the same gorgeous lines as the LC Coupe that we saw a couple years ago, but with the roof chopped off, it definitely shows off this car even more, and it's gonna stand out everywhere you take it. Now, in my last video, we talked about all the things about the convertible that make it a convertible. So in this video, we're gonna get behind the wheel and we're gonna find out, is the new LC convertible the most desirable Lexus you can buy today? That's what we're here to find out. So gorgeous styling only gets you so far. What's powering the LC is probably the next best thing about this car. Now, thankfully, unlike the coupe where you could also get this car as a hybrid with two electric motors, it only comes right now as the 500. So you get the company's corporate five liter naturally aspirated V8. It's one of the last naturally aspirated V8s you're gonna find in the you know, tier one luxury segment. It makes the same numbers as the coupe. You have 471 horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque. Uh, those numbers are gonna be realized very high in the rev range. This thing will rev out to around 7,200 RPM and she sounds damn good when you're doing it. Now it only goes out through one transmission choice. It's Lexus's 10 speed automatic transmission. It's a very quick shifting transmission and all LCs will be rear wheel drive. There's also an optional limited slip differential. Now this engine, you should be pretty familiar with it because Lexus has been doing it for some quite some time. When you take off the engine cover on the ISF or the RCF, there's actually blue intake runners. And as you can see, Lexus didn't go ahead and put the blue intake runners on the LC's V8, which is fine by me. It's got this really nice plastic covering over it, but this engine, they've been doing it for quite some time. So you know it's going to be a reliable engine. It has direct fuel injection and port injection as well. And fuel economy is rated at 15 in the city, 25 on the highway, which is about one MPG less versus the coupe. This car does weigh a little bit more. Remember, it's a drop top. They had to add, they had to add more structural bracing to it. It weighs around 4,540 pounds, so around 4,600 pounds. So she's a heavy girl. Lexus says you'll get to 60 in around 4.6 seconds, and you'll reach a top speed of around 170 miles. Miles an hour. Now the exhaust system on the LC is actually a quad unit, even though you can't really see it because the trim finishers are a dual, but let's fire up the V8 and hear how it sounds. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that's why you want to get the 5 liter V8 in this car. Definitely sounds better than the hybrid. <laughs> so to kick off part two of the Lexus LC convertible review and of course start with the driving impressions, I am going to get over driving the vehicle first with the roof up because I know sacrilege driving an LC convertible with the roof up. Why in the hell would you want to do that? The truth of the matter is, is most people who have convertibles actually drive them with the roof up most of the time. So I'm going to first go over what this thing is like to drive. How's the visibility? How's the noise factor? Because remember, this is a soft top. So those of you who have an IS250C or an SC430, those have a hard top. You probably want to know, well, how's the quietness on the thing on this thing? So we're going to get out on the highway here on the interstate and go on highway speeds and see how the noise is. That is the overly eager lane departure alert that Lexus comes standard with their safety system plus. And unfortunately, there is a bunch of cars in front of us, so I won't be able to floor it and see how this thing handles, but that's okay because we're heading toward a back road and we will be driving this thing out on a back road. Now, in terms of the visibility, uh, if you guys are used to the way the coupe is, uh, this is pretty similar. And there's a car in front of me that's blowing out a ton of blue smoke. It's great for the environment. Um, in terms of visibility, it's pretty similar. You do have standard blind spot monitoring on this car. Oh look, a Camry TRD. Ooh, I can't wait to open up this engine when the roof is down. It's gonna be even louder. Uh, and you have a pretty decent view out of the front. Side mirrors are pretty good size. The view out of the back is very bad because the window is pretty small. It's nice that Lexus includes a glass rear window though, which is great with a defogger. Uh, but I'm noticing the A pillar or the D pillars back there big, massive blind spots. So you're gonna be depending heavily on the blind spot monitoring 
when you're changing lanes in this thing. I had, there were definitely times where I felt a little unsure of myself if I had passed the car because I literally cannot see um, past the car, past that point. But in terms of noise, Jesus, that Honda has really crap ton amount of blue smoke that it's blowing out. Um, in terms of noise in here, it's actually not that bad. I was expecting this thing to be a lot worse. I was expecting it to have a ton of road and wind noise. And it's actually not as bad as I thought it could be. It's actually not as bad. And that's the beauty of it. I was going like 70, you know, 75 miles an hour on the interstate, and I can still hold a conversation as you guys can hear. Uh, Lexus actually did a, put a decent amount of, you know, materials of noise absorbing materials in the top. Now, obviously it's still not gonna be quite as secure as a hard top, but I would argue that the reduced cost, the reduced complexity, and it just looks better. I never liked the way the hard top convertibles look on any car really. Um, so the fact that Lexus went with a classic soft top is a little bit more beneficial in my eyes. But enough about driving with the roof up. Let's take the roof down and see what this thing is like. Now I had to take off my camera because the windows automatically go down and the camera would have fallen off the suction cup mount. And as you can see, 15 seconds later, the roof is down. We'll turn off the air conditioning. We'll put the windows back up. Put my little suction cup mount back on. All right, let's see what this thing is like. You never thought a Lexus could sound this good, could did ya? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that is just music to my ears. Oh. <laughs> you can hear it even more clearly now that the roof is off. <laughs> oh my god, what a freaking engine. And this 10-speed transmission just snaps through the gears. Now, I will say that it is geared rather widely for a 10-speed. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Damn, Lexus, what the hell have you built with this car? This, this definitely ain't no boring Lexus that your mom or your grandma drives. Oh my God, I, I can't get over this engine. It's just so intoxicating sounding. Oh my God. Okay, <laughs> let's, let me get my thoughts back together because I am clearly obviously enjoying this car a lot. Now in terms of the driving with the roof up, I got the windows up because I've got slow cars in front of me. It actually is not bad in here, the wind buffeting. As you can see, when the engine starts to settle down, it, the exhaust goes away, it goes into a quieter mode. There's actually a really nice gentle breeze going through my head. I can talk to you guys and not have to yell. It is just really serene and the ride quality is also really damn good. It rides comfortably despite being on 21 inch wheels. Um, this one here has adaptive damper so I can go into like a comfort mode here if I'd like to and just cruise. And that's the beauty about having a car like this. Now, I wanna go back into Sport Plus here. I wanna turn off the traction control. See how this thing does. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. And this thing is rear wheel drive. And you know what? There was barely any wheel spin there. Barely any wheel spin. What the heck has Lexus done to put the power down to those rear wheels so well? Now I will say there are faster sports cars or there are faster drop luxury GT drop tops. Lexus says you'll get to 60 in 4.6 seconds with this car, which is about 0 0.2, 0 0.1 seconds slower than the coupe. It's 200 pounds heavier, remember. Um, I would argue that this is still plenty of speed for most people. I mean, basically four and a half seconds to 60 is impressive. Sure, do we want more speed? Absolutely. There is an LCF coming for 2022. So basically a year and a half from now, we will have a twin turbocharged V8 with around 600 horsepower, the rumor. This is the rumor mill, of course. 
I'm not sure if that car will also be rear wheel drive, but I would like to see the zero to 60 time drop to, you know, three and a half seconds. That would put it into supercar territory, obviously. 4.6 is a good number. This is this is probably gonna satisfy about 95% of enthusiasts, especially with that freaking noise in the back. <laughs> I can never get tired of doing that. That is so awesome. <laughs> Damn, Lexus. Oh, <laughs> for those of you who think Lexus doesn't know how to build exciting cars, drive this mother frickin' thing. This is, oh, this is so good. Even the handling of the LC, it's a big girl. This is a heavy car at 4,600 pounds, and it actually handles really nicely. I'm impressed at the steering feel, the heft of it. The suspension actually stays relatively um, compliant, yet it also doesn't lean much in the corners. The back end gets a little feisty when you start really pushing this thing hard. It'll drift easily. This is a drift, a drift happy car. And sure, could Lexus have put a manual in this car? Absolutely, but the 10 speed, for the most part, is a good transmission. I do find that sometimes it can get a little confused and it'll shift roughly at times. But remember, the 10 speed is a Lexus Toyota design transmission. The engine is the five liter V8 that revs to 7,200 RPM. It's been around for a while. So you know that this car is going to be damn reliable. That's the whole reason why you bought a Lexus. You wanna buy a Lexus obviously over a BMW, over a Mercedes, over a Porsche. But let's talk a little bit about the competition set for this car because you could compare it to things like a Porsche 911 Cabriolet, or a Targa, you can get a, of course, an AMG Mercedes GT, GTC, or you can get an S-Class Coupe or an E-Class Coupe, or you can get a BMW 8 Series convertible. I've driven most of those vehicles except the 911 Targa or Cabriolet, and the Porsche is probably the one that really has my eye. Lexus, of course, wants you to compare this car to all the luxury GTs like an Aston Martin DB11 or a Bentley Continental GT, which I don't think the LC could really fit into that class. But the beauty about this car is you can daily drive this thing. It's not low enough to the point where it's gonna scrape on everything. It attracts attention everywhere you go and people are so surprised because it's a Lexus. It's a Lexus that looks damn sexy and it has none of the frumpiness that you associate with all the other Lexuses or the boringness that you get because even though this car will settle down into a nice gentle cruise when you want it to, I'll put it into comfort right now. The transmission goes into a more softer shift programming um, the noise levels in here are just really nice. You have this very, very waft of fresh air. You smell the fresh air out there. You just literally feel all of your worries, all your anxiety just kind of goes out through the roof of this car. And you really just kind of enjoy the cruise. And really the only thing that's annoying me right now is this these slow cars in front of me because I really would love to push this thing a little bit more. But I'm just genuinely happy that Lexus finally gave us a drop top of this car. And even though I don't have final pricing yet of this vehicle, not of this, not as of yet of this filming, I would estimate this car is probably around $110,000, which is a lot of money for a Lexus. It's a lot of money for any car, really. But compare that to a 911 convertible, and the Lexus definitely has the value on its side. It has a V8 engine, which you can't even get on a 911 with an amazing noise. This thing just sounds like American muscle. Lexus has literally built us a Japanese roadster, luxury roadster that sounds like American muscle with that V8, yet it has the build quality we expect from Lexus. There's basically no cowl shake. The structure feels really solid. In fact, this one here that I'm driving is a pre-production prototype kind of thing. They, this, is, this is not up to Lexus's snuff for build quality. And aside from a few misaligned body panels, which I can't knock on this car because it's a, pre, a hand-built pre-production model, it is incredibly solid to drive. And it really shows you that Lexus has the potential to be tier one luxury like they always have been and compete with the Germans and the Europeans. And they have the potential to give us a damn exciting car that isn't the boring, you know, mommy mobile that your, your mom drives, your grandmother drives or whatnot. This is a car that you aspire to own. It's going to make the Lexus brand more prestigious. It's going to make people proud to drive a Lexus even more, especially when you see one of these out on the road. Now, in terms of fuel economy, uh, it's rated at 15 in the city and 25 on the highway. I averaged around 19 MPG in my four days that I had this car, and I trust me, I, I couldn't get enough of go dipping into the throttle. So for a five liter V8, obviously you gotta pay to play but the gas mileage of this car is not bad. 
premium, of course, is going to be recommended or required, uh, and you'll get roughly around 320 miles on a full tank of gas. Now, of course, if you guys want to see a more in-depth walk around of the interior, of the exterior, be sure to click on the link in the description below where you can watch my first video on the LC500 convertible where I basically go over all the ins and outs and talk about what makes the convertible unique versus the coupe version. So it may have taken a few years for Lexus to finally get the drop top formula right. As you can see, after spending the last few days with the new LC convertible, I have to say, the top is very fast to go up and down, about 15 seconds. You can also put it down while you're traveling around up to 30 miles an hour. This car seriously turns a lot of heads. I actually had a McLaren uh, for the weekend before I had this car, and it attracted basically almost the same amount of attention, but it also kind of surprised a lot of people because if you look at this thing, it's a Lexus. This is a Lexus, and you don't typically associate Lexus with building sexy cars, and I think that's the beauty about the LC in general. When I first drove the LC Coupe a couple years ago, I kept telling Lexus, build a drop-top version. And you know what? I'm really glad that they decided to do it. It took them a little bit of time, but I also like the fact that they went with a soft top. Just like the Coupe version, it has an amazing engine that sounds even better when you're driving it. While it is a heavy car, you don't really feel the weight when you're driving this thing because it handles really well, it rides really well, the seats are comfortable. The technology in it is still kind of meh. I don't love the infotainment system, but at least they, add, they added Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for 2021. And really, if you're looking for a new luxury GT Grand Tour car that turns a lot of heads and also will have a reputation for reliability, the new Lexus LC convertible should be at the very top of your Lex list because it's a car that simply a lot of people didn't expect Lexus to actually build. And really when it goes on sale in August of 2020, so just basically next month, Lexus hasn't announced the starting price of this car as of this filming. I'll include that as a comment to let you guys know what the pricing is, but I'm gonna estimate Lexus will charge about $10,000 more versus the coupe. The coupe, as you know, starts at around $93,000, about uh, five grand more if you guys go for the hybrid. Don't go for the hybrid, you want the five liter V8. I'm gonna say this one here with the upgraded interior, the 21 inch wheels, um, the upgraded Mark Levinson sound system and the limited slip differential is probably gonna be around $110,000. For that money, obviously you're gonna compare it to things like a Porsche 911 Cabriolet. You can also compare it to like an Aston Martin DB11 or a Mercedes AMG GTC, something like that. And the Lexus is gonna be considerably cheaper. And with that five liter V8, uh, the noise that it makes, the comfortable, the comfortable cabin, this is going to be one interesting addition to Lexus lineup when it goes on sale. I just hope that it sells because as you guys know, Lexus has some plans for the LC. There should be a more powerful LCF coming soon. And really that's the one that I'm super excited to drive because there were times where I wanted a little bit more power, but most of the times you're gonna be pretty happy with the way this car performs as a whole. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.